What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 Old World AI only battle. We continue onwards towards turn 350. We're getting through it now. We're getting up in the numbers. Two huge wars still going on. Mongolia and Russia. And, I, and as we saw, I don't want to, you know, we looked at the info addicts at the end of last episode. So if you for some reason not watch that one fully, maybe quick snip back if you don't want a spoiler. But we saw that even Poland and Finland have more troops than Russia so don't tempt them that's all I'm saying don't don't give them any temptation Russia they might come in look at all these Finland troops this would be a real nightmare if they joined here which is on basically the front line all of a sudden Mongolia get in this city all these units wouldn't be able to sort of move as easily to assist it could get interesting and of course Russia and Rome at war as well just even though Rome won't do much if anything to Russia and same with Harappa they were both bigger militaries, which might just tempt other civs to join, or based on the numbers, even if those civs are not going to come over there themselves. I mean, there's a world where the Ottomans could get be brave enough, and it could work if they get some maybe a bit more help. But look, the city's wide open; <laughs> it could happen. Maybe I'm bigging it up too much. Probably nothing will happen. But we, while while we wait and just you know ponder, Rome will go after Portugal still. Byzantium denouncing Rome. Oof. You sure you're in a position to do that, Byzantium? <laughs> sure you want to do that? You are definitely, like, I don't think Rome's quite there because they lack an air force, but there's a point in the future where Rome, like, takes them out in one turn. Like, it just comes up with declared war, and then boom, they're gone. <laughs> so they need to be careful, but we'll let them have their fun. As Rome, they've had their turn again and they are definitely getting pushed out of Braga in the south that it doesn't look like there's any ri they might sneak one unit in to take it when it's got no health but it looks like Portugal's got them on the retreat in the south although they are sort of swamping in a bit more in northern Iberia here you see they've cut off this road so that cuts off reinforcements but they can go by sea that's worked for them so far Keep an eye on the other sieves. They're almost like all too scared, aren't they, to, <laughs> to make a move. We're just seeing a lot of sieves that declare wars not having it go too well. We saw plenty of sieves struggle against Morocco. We are seeing Russia have issues. We are seeing Rome's now struggling. Um, Byzantium. Now, are you in? <laughs> I'm very. I think this is just slowly. It's the turns are going a bit slower. We're not really rezzing. Rome did just get embargo. I think it's just the turns going so slow, or not so slow, but slow enough that we're not giving enough time. <laughs> for the city to recover but for a minute I was like Burundi on the comeback but no I think they're just passing by and that city is just healing up again to max health three nukes now in this former Valachian city that is owned by Finland that could have wherever they chose to use those that could be big because they could probably get away with using them on certain particularly on Poland but no one's used one yet as far as I'm aware Rome might be <laughs> <laughs> be, be, um, you know, is it Augustus Caesar in this game? Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar? They're, the, they're not the same person, are they? Oh no, I've exposed the lack of history knowledge here. Let's move on. Whoever's in charge is, might be thinking, he's probably itching to press that button, like, we're losing. Come on. <laughs> but no, Russia. Russia? Rome. Retake Braga again. See, I don't know how on earth they did that. This destroyer just stuck through out of nowhere and again got it done. But it did seem like Portugal were putting on a bit of a better defence in the south. Poland's turn. England's new city up here is starting to grow fairly big. Korea threatening them. I don't know if those two are still at war. Probably not. But maybe if Korea's submarine... That would be top tier trolling if this submarine is just slow sinking all the <laughs> infantry units as they tried to cross. I would assume they've pieced out if England is being this liberal with sending units across. Not that they can do anything, because I don't think they can even see a nuclear sub with any of their units, so they're kind of in a rough spot there. Their units are just randomly sinking. It's not really what you want. Portugal retaking their cities again. P 
plenty of activity. Congo with an atomic bomb down here as well in the South Atlantic. Just trying to keep track of them all. There's so many sieves that have them now. Oh, do Ethiopia, they have bombers. Oh, they don't, they do as well. This is, I didn't check, did the Zulu have one? No. Okay, they do, they have some. Theirs is hidden away on a little island somewhere, but everyone seems to have them. Harappa, do you have any? No. Harappa might be the biggest sieve outside, I guess Mongolia and Russia also lack them. I think France does have them. We've seen Finland has them, so that's impressive. France definitely, England doesn't, but I wouldn't say they were big. Yeah, France has a couple. Russia doesn't have any planes. Mongolia does not have them either. Korea has some missiles, although they are not exactly, they're stuck in the Atlantic, I think. India now has atomic bombs, so they're now a bit of a threat to Korea, potentially. Especially as, it, I mean, Korea can probably hit the nuclear missile from wherever it is, but it's not exactly close. Um, which is an interesting thought. But yeah, that's pretty much most of the civs now. Mali and Songhai, two without in Africa. Just England, Germany, and po uh, Portugal as well. England, Germany, Portugal, a few more in Europe. Obviously some of the small ones as well, Wallachia, Byzantium, Ottomans, although the Ottomans just entered the atomic era a few turns ago, so they might might just turn that around. There it is. That's what we've been waiting for for a while. And this, this is going to be exciting, I think. This will probably be more interesting than Rome's stag stagnant invasion of Portugal, Ethiopia, going after Harappa. I think these are two top 10 militaries. I don't, I'm going to assume Ethiopia probably has the edge on the basis they've declared this war. But we'll see if India maybe thinks about joining too, because that would really, this would be big, because we're, we're going to lose a top 10 sieve if that happens. Like These are sort of middle, they're not quite top tier in my view. Maybe, maybe it's just too open now to tell on that front, but you know, I think they're probably both like middle tier upper upper middle lower top tier uh, yeah let's say lower top because there's just so many good sieves in this game it's gone really weird but um yeah if, if one of them took the other one out it would be massive like the the, the sieve that comes out of this could be huge uh, competing with congo nubia as well or obviously competing with india if we go and harappa wins i don't want to discount harappa but Ethiopia already making a good start, and this battle begins. Harappa does have some planes, but Babylon already under a bit of threat, and Ethiopia certainly has better planes as well. And Damascus has already been taking a bit of a beating, so Ethiopia could very quickly sneak in here, completely isolate Babylon, and then we'll obviously see if they try to cross the Persian Gulf entrance to go after the Harappan cities in India, and also we'll see if India is at any point tempted into this war. Still holding here, this is a bit of a, bit of a no man's land between the two at the moment. Korea is putting more units on land. Mongolia gets the Manhattan Project. I'm not sure how this city is being damaged, I guess they're just ramming units into it, but there we go. Yeah, Korea is bringing some units back, or they're just building new ones, but either way, they are, you know, this border was completely open at one point, and it isn't the case anymore, so maybe just a bit of temptation. We saw Mongolia fall to about 400k units or below, so maybe Korea's just having a little thought about it, considering it. There's still plenty of fighting going on around South America between the Zulu and Portugal, and maybe Portugal will get will lose this city at some point. They do have some marines here and some artillery to defend it. So we'll see how it all pans out. There they are, the Korean <laughs> nuclear missiles. The most powerful unit on the map at this point. I mean, you could argue for the death robot, which has also moved. Yeah, they've moved all their units out of Southeast Asia. And up, you know, the death robots are around Seoul and Busan. I think they're gearing up, they're thinking about it, whether it's Japan or Mongolia, they're probably thinking about something, it might not even be that, it might just be Babylon or something. Japan puts down Hiroshima, there, at the top, just close to home, maybe that's why Korea's bringing everything back, they're like, nope, you can't do that. One of the Ottoman settlers also looks like it was heading for that location, Ethiopia grabbed Hawaii, the big island, and it looks like the Ottomans will try and get a city in the new world. 
as well. And I don't know, that other Ethiopian settler may be South America bound as well. Not that there's really any space left in South America. Maybe they don't have vision of everything. Although I'm assuming most of the Sibs would have satellites. I'm going to say satellites, but the Ottomans only just entered the atomic era. So they probably don't. They are probably exploring for the first time. So fair play to them for giving it a try, even this late in the game. Some of these sieves are being really, like, cautious. Like, I think France could have... I mean, Portugal does look good, and I know France is more spread out, but you have to think France could... They were the second, right, third biggest military. I know, again, it looks like... Look, if you look at what's here, by eye, looks nothing like what's here for Portugal, so it's hard to say they should do it, but... Overall, they clearly had enough to, like... They could have easily... You know, if they came in, then that would probably outnumber Portugal, all these ships that are here helping blocking Rome's boats would have been forced to fight over here and there it is Ethiopia takes Babylon I hope did you get I think Harappa got no because I think they had three in one plane here and then six here so I don't even think they got their planes out so they may have just lost their air force and Babylon falls to Ethiopia which also gives them access to, you know this is a very good region for food sadly Babylon's been taken a few times so it's not exactly big population but already a good win for Ethiopia and now they'll set their sights here on Damascus, which they should get. And then it's just about whether they make the leap into Harappan, India. Which may be not even the best idea. They might be better off piecing out and then going after someone else. You know, go for the Ottomans. Now you've got a bigger border with them. This becomes a lot easier to take Ankara now. You could maybe try and jump onto Persia as well. But yeah, I'm not not I'm not convinced that even if they get this city, they'd be good enough to to go take Harappa out. Harappa seems pretty strong here. But if India was to join, you never know, things could change. But Harappa actually retakes this city, which is quite impressive. I don't think that'll last <laughs> for too long. They'll lose a couple of these infantries probably next turn. Ethiopia and Harappa, neck and neck by the way. Look, they both entered the information era in the same turn. So they are very close to each other in terms of performance. Germany's turn. Wonder. <laughs> I keep seeing, look, even now, there's just German units randomly all around the map, just like, I don't know what they're doing. They're, they're, they're doing my job. They're, they're AI only as well. Look, they're just. There's always a couple of ships here just watching what's going on. There's always, like, one up here. There's always a few around England. <laughs> they're just watching the map, like, yeah, what's going on? Let's have a look. <laughs> They're just like the nosiest Civ in the world. They're just trying to see what everyone's trying to do. Oh, I think they did it. Have they... I don't see either of them. Yeah, I think Rome might have pulled the trigger on Porto. It's going to take a few turns to load in. Uh, Russia and Mongolia, that war is over. And from the mini-map, it looks okay. I'll just double-check. Uh, Ethiopia grabs two cities that turn. I just want to see if this loads in. Any fallout or anything. Because I can't see them. Rome could have moved them. They could have been destroyed on a carrier or something. But I don't see those atomic bombs. And Porto. That was a big like amount of damage to have taken. All things considered. Maybe here as well. But I don't think so. Because that would have hit France surely. The Ottomans are at war with... I don't know. Are they? I don't know what's going on here with Finland. Maybe they are. Um, but yeah, Mongolia gets a few peace deals. Ethiopia grabs both cities in the Arabian Peninsula. And Russia and Mongolia do peace out with no cities changing hands. So there we go. Recovery time for both of them. After, yeah, they've both fallen sort of outwards towards the bottom end of the top 10 armies in the world. So you'd want to see them rebuild. But what a crazy world. Yeah, I'm very confused. What is going on here? Finland. What are you doing, Finland? What is your, what, what Finland doing? What is someone doing to Finland? A war with the Ottomans. Okay, has that been going on the whole time? I have no idea. Maybe I missed that pop up. Or maybe it popped up and I ignored it because I forgot that they were bordering each other. I mean, this is a risky game for the Ottomans because Finland could use those things. I mean, I think you could... Again, it's a question of where. You'd probably end up in a war with the Wallachia. You know, you probably could get away with it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't see... Oh, there they are. Okay, never mind. 
run must have just hit Porto pretty hard with their land units. But they are being repelled. They only have... I was going to say a handful. There's quite a few still units in Portuguese territory. But he's not going as well. But the Zulu Navy now showing up. That could that could hurt a little bit. Um, a few more boats coming to get in the way. As Rome retakes Coimbra again. And Porto is now in the red. This, is, this could be it. If Porto falls, <laughs> that could change things. Because Rome could start to push forward more. Maybe they hold on to that. We'll see. But so far, they've, they've not been able to do anything. So they've, they've not convinced me that this is going to be a huge success. But yeah, if Rome gets Porto, you might start to see just a struggle. Obviously, that's a huge... Portugal are probably still producing a lot of units in Porto. It's their second main city back at home, essentially. So if they were to lose that, or even if it just gets taken once and loses half its population and then goes back again and loses like another half, then it's it's pretty much useless for that purpose. And then Rome will obviously just be pumping out units like there's no tomorrow back at home. So that's a shame. But, you go. Know, I mean, Laeria here is actually now that... I probably butchered that pronunciation, but Laeria? 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 I don't know, whichever one. <laughs> probably none of those. Probably producing a lot of units. That's probably where a lot of the boats are coming from, but still. There is this sneaky open borders with France as well, which... Hinders Rome. Yeah, I mean, if France isn't going to go after Portugal with Rome, then the best thing, the best alternative is probably to try and help Portugal stay alive for as long as possible because France is certainly going to benefit from time passing. They have so many cities out here that are growing, so many resources that they will be extracting and production, everything. Just the longer the game goes on for France, the better because they will start to get some real benefits out of the new world. As we keep going forward, while some of these civs have not taken a city in years, you know, hundreds of turns for some of the big contenders in Europe. Um, and the Zulu should take Villanova de Gaia here, another one of Portugal's main cities, to be honest. At 14 pop, you have to put it in there. That's like a top five city for them at this point. That will fall to the Zulu. A lot of resources lost as well, so that's going to hurt their war effort even more. Okay, so far, Babylon, they still need to clear a few more units here, Ethiopia, but they should be okay. Damascus, they may have to lose it and then retake it. It's at three, so it's not a disaster. We'll keep an eye on it. India's actually moving away from Harappa, so we'll see what they're up to. Rome retakes two cities. We don't... Oh, they took Porto, though, this time. That is pretty big. Porto and then Coimbra in the north as well. So, yeah, it's looking a bit rough for Portugal now. Things are starting, I think that Zulu Navy may be just, yeah, just distracting. Rome's been struggling to fight because it would always be four Portuguese ships and then like one Rome, one coming out at a time. But now the Zulu distracting, their battleships have arrived, catching a few units off guard. Potentially Porto does return, but again, that was a huge blow losing it in the first place. And the Zulu, in the meantime, grabbing a big chunk of South America. Wow, this is, this is crazy, this game. The Ottomans do sneak in their settler to get themselves a bit of territory in the New World. Bit of real estate. Oh, and another one too here next to Japan as Ethiopia's settler also arrives up here. So lots of new civs arriving in North America in the last few turns. Ethiopia actually have another settler crossing the Pacific as we speak. So there we go. Plenty still going on. India has so many nukes. G57. Why are they all over here? I mean... That would be brutal if they like went after the Congo with them or something. There really is like no small wars. Like I guess there is the ones where they declare on people that aren't near them are small, but you know, there, any border war is pretty huge right now. It has an impact. The Ottomans still failing against Finland. And yeah, Portugal once again rebuffing Rome. Who are still at war with Russia. I don't know if that's you know that influences anything that they're up to. They have at least a six-tile gap. I think Russia could, if they, yeah, towards the end of the tech tree, I'm assuming Rome could put an atomic bomb in Campiolung here and possibly reach. Maybe not. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but I mean, they wouldn't be able to retaliate. That would be brutal, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be harsh. I imagine we'll get a peace deal in that war soon, I and mean, you might see like Adrianople go to Rome or something, which just adds to the 
interest in this region of the map. Porto has been captured by Rome again. Just keeps going back and forth. But it looks like Coimbra might stay Roman this time. I'm afraid there's not really any melee boats or land units. No privateers, no nothing around. So it looks like that is as good as sticking. Damascus falls again. Babylon is now pretty clear of Harappan units, so that should be staying. Harappan has a nuclear sub. That's certainly going to hinder an Ethiopian effort at a naval invasion, but I don't think they're going to make one, to be honest. I think they are. I think that's what they wanted. They got what they wanted. These two territories off of Harappa, it's still a big blow. I mean, Harappa, they, I was going to say three, losing two of their five cities. They do have one in Australia and a huge one in North America. Look at the amount of t land this city is now acquired for them. <laughs> so many resources just from one city so many such so production the crater copper sugar um you know more mines silver in there as well i think silver just got banned but <laughs> ignoring that manufactory here they have a landmark giving them 10 culture that's a pretty great and they did eventually get the grand mesa as well so that's given the harappans a lot of bonus sort of you know resources to use korea now has a settler see where that heads off to around the map oh wow Finland actually moved their nukes because I think they're gonna lose this to the Ottomans and that opens up some doors for example Ottomans Poland something between these two Ottomans to go after Wallachia I mean it does open up some options if the Ottomans get this and the, the moving of the nukes suggests they think they will Nubia is doing their thing Rome has had their turn no, it might be after the Ottomans, actually. If this is the situation and Rome hasn't had their turn, then this could be a really good turn for Rome to, like, wrap things up, you know, pick, pick off some of those units, take Braga again, and then Portugal's trying to retake three at once. And there it is. The Ottomans did it. Okay, there we go. They take that Finnish city. They just keep going upwards in this vertical sort of shape. It's kind of curving off a bit, but <laughs> that's it. <laughs> got such a weird shaped empire it's so awkward i don't know i don't think attacking it would be easy i don't think defending it must be easy but it is just a mess of like you know this railroad is just vital like if you could probably take out this railroad and that would impact them completely but there we go the ottomans either way they take this city portugal retakes porto so never mind I said it would be a good term for rome to sort of you know tie up the loose ends but look at portugal now they're looking a bit bit beaten there's not as many there's no big queue of submarines waiting to go and fight i think rome has probably done enough so that in the next episode they will start to put the final nail in portugal's coffin which is a bit of a shame not that this was unexpected but portugal they did look like they were putting up a good defense i think rome were definitely the favorites between these two congo's turn did they get did that settler ever get anywhere? I know they had one sort of lurking around. Um, I think they already had these three. This is another city that's got a huge amount of land just for one city. There is the faster border expansion mod on. So if you make a lot of culture, your, your borders will grow a bit quicker. That's probably applied to Harappa, for example. That's why you see some cities that just have a huge amount of tiles. Um, it fills up the map a bit nicer and as you can see I mean the whole map is nearly full there is only really some there's a few islands that can be settled there's no real big open spaces on the mini map apart from oh no the Himalayas are actually fully gone it just doesn't show very well this is it like this is the only real remaining big open expanse of territory there's nothing in Europe nothing in Africa nothing in Asia almost nothing in South America there's a few tiles here which will probably just be swallowed up by the borders, I don't think anyone will get a settler in there. Maybe you could probably squeeze one here. One of these three sieves could probably squeeze one there, but no one else will really have a chance. France putting their nukes in the Caribbean now. <laughs> Perfect for a strike on Portugal. But we'll see. Porto falling to Rome again and Braga's at no health. Coimbra is now starting to recover its health. So yeah, this might be the end for Portugal in Europe. They will survive in the new world. And being there with that being your only sort of city can make things interesting. Because some of the civs have cities there and then they just forget about them. They don't really defend them. They're just there. 
And, you know, Portugal will, that's it for them. They will try and take those sort of one-off cities. Now, I don't think it applies as much to them. Maybe they go for the Ethiopian one. It's not exactly easy. But, you know, take it the other way. Imagine France got kicked out of Europe. They could probably go after these Congo cities. They could probably take this one off Harappa before Harappa does anything. They could get this one and this one. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. This one certainly would be a target too. So, you know, if France got kicked out of Europe, it would be different. It would be interesting. But Portugal, sadly, I don't think they'd attack France. So, and the Zulu were beating them anyway. So, I, maybe Ethiopia. But you can see they're probably going to lose more here and possibly get eliminated in the in the longer run. Which kind of sucks. Did India just add a new city? No, they've always had this. I feel like one of these is new, but not that new. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. Oh, Harappa retakes Damascus. <laughs> yeah, because you just left Ethiopia. What did you expect? <laughs> just left it behind and then it got taken. No surprise there. Okay. Finland. Oh, they actually got open borders and have launched a paradrop reinvasion. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty rare that we see something like that. Finland going for the tactical sneaky there. We'll see how that pans out. But that is going to be it for this episode. And Porto is with Rome at the end of this turn. So that's the first time I think that's happened. But thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'm just realising as this episode comes to an end. Am I getting this right? What day? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is the Christmas episode. So, Merry Christmas as well. And obviously, if you're not celebrating Christmas, any other holidays um, that happen at this time, or ones that aren't, just have a great day. You know, there you go. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Merry Christmas. Um, I I can't remember when I used to put videos out on Christmas. I think I do because not everyone's, you know, having the best day kind of thing. So if, if you want a distraction, it's here. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.